The importance of signing Mendy has never been more critical. I will explain why. Callum Hudson Odoi, is it time to go? And why we need to be patient with Kai Havertz and Timo Werner. Lego. Welcome to the Gaff Guys, you guys. And Chelsea beat Brighton this weekend, but yet there were some glaring storylines to take away from the game. Let's cover it. We'll start with a keeper, Lego. But before we get into that, I need a massive favor from you guys. Hit the subscribe button, like the video, and comment. And while you're at it, go and tell your friends about this channel. This channel needs all the help it can get, all right? We're growing, we're popping, and we're doing the thing. Let's build a good community here, keep it interactive, Lego. Mendy is more important than ever. I can't believe I'm about to say this. I'm not the biggest fan of Mendy, right? I don't think he is the solution to our problems, but I'm telling you now, he will mitigate the issues that we are having drastically. He's very good in the air at coming for crosses. He's agile, he gets good reflex saves. Yes, he pushes it back into the danger area, but at least he gets some hands to it. The progress of the deal. The deal looks like it's going to happen. The deal looks like Marina is working her miracle again. There's rumors that she is trying to negotiate a deal that's gonna come down to 18 million up front and then add-ons to take it up to the 28 if need be. Renz wanted 45 million initially. They got settled and brought down to 30 and now Marina's brought it down to 18. The deal's going to get announced. Apparently he was in London this weekend. It's good to hear. I'm not gonna lie to you. We got the best person on the job. Marina Garofskaiva, shout out to you. I'm gonna ask you guys a question right now that I think I've asked myself maybe 50 times in the space of a week. What are we going to do with Kepa? On a level, what are we going to do with Kepa? Kepa is shot of confidence. Literally, this is, a, this is no longer a, is he good enough issue? This is, he's not confident anymore. This guy is flapping for crosses. He's not saving shots that are on target. He is overthinking everything. He is not a bad goalkeeper, guys. Look, you don't become a terrible goalkeeper overnight. You don't have the whole of Europe chasing you. Yet you turn into a bad goalkeeper. This is a confidence issue. I'm gonna explain. Navarro Morata. Morata was a good striker at Juventus. He was a decent striker at Real Madrid. He came to Chelsea. When he was confident, he was flying. He went into a barren spell. The fans got on his back. He turned terrible. And what happened? Remember when he scored that goal and cried on the pitch? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember how bad we all felt when that happened? Well, I hope you did. I'm not gonna lie to you because Bro, that was some sad stuff. But this is the same thing with Kepa. The same thing with Kepa. Look at Kepa. He needs to leave. He needs to leave for his own sanity. I'm telling you. This player can go and revive his career somewhere else. He could be Spain's number one in next year's Euros. But yet, I have a feeling Chelsea are going to keep him. He's going to be the backup. And... I feel like it's a bad mistake. I think we need to loan him out for his sake, for our sake. This needs to, we need to cut ties. Literally cut it. You need to cut it. Literally cut those ties. I don't want to see him. This is like a very bad R&B song going on. Like I'm so sick of these love songs. Literally, I'm so sick of you pleading for you to actually get your hands onto something. Literally, let's get him out of there, bro. I need Neo to tell him to let go. Please, someone sell it right now. I'm begging you. Speaking about disrespect, Callum hudson Adoy is number one victim on this team. I'm getting into it. Let me get this straight. Maurizio Sarri didn't start him. There was an uproar. People were going crazy. The world of any Chelsea fan was fuming. They were saying this player is too good to be behind Pedro and this player is too good to be behind William. Yet, Maurizio Sarri leaves, there's a new contract, everyone is raring to go, you know. Hudson Odoi is going to get a chance. He's going to get an opportunity. Him and Pulisic competing. What happened? It's a year on and he's getting overlooked for Mason Mount. Deep that. Okay, let's just talk about it. Cup final. Pedro's got one foot out the door. Pulisic is injured. You're thinking Cho's going to come on, right? No, it's Pedro. Pedro gets ahead of the queue for Hudson Odoi. Hudson Odoi gets overlooked again. Okay, he comes back early for preseason. He's doing his thing. So, surely he's going to get an opportunity. He bangs for the under-21s. No Pulisic, no Zayic, no wingers. No problem, right? Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Mason Mount gets the opportunity ahead of him. Ruben Loftus-Cheek plays ahead of him. I'm not going to... I need an explanation. I'm not going to lie to you. 
Why is he not being allowed to leave the club? Send him out on loan. He needs to play. He's not going to develop sitting. He needs to leave for his own sake. I feel so sorry for this player. He's on a major contract. He's too expensive to sell. He's, he's too expensive to loan. But yet, he gets no opportunity. A centre midfielder started ahead of him. Again. This is worrying. I don't know what we're going to do with this. Because is he even going to play this year? I'm not even kidding. All jokes aside, is he even going to play this year? Pulisic is going to get the starting lineup, right? He's got the left wing wrapped. Hakim Ziyech has got the right wing under wraps. Okay, so what does this leave? Hudson Odoi, right? No. Ruben can play wing. Havertz can play wing. And Mount can play wing. Werner can play wing. He is going to get overlooked for every single one of them. He needs to sort himself out. He really needs to sort himself out. And I think, sadly, leaving is the alternative. I don't want to see it. I would give him an opportunity. But I think leaving is the way to go. Because this disrespect is not going to stop. Two players made their debut. Werner and Havertz. Two different performances. Let's get into it. At one performance in Timo Werner. Tenacious. Assertive. Quick. Aggressive. Very... I know what I'm going to do. I know my attributes. I know my role in this team. But why is that? He's 24 years old, guys. He's in his prime. He's going into his prime now. 24, 25. This guy is going to be our best number nine for the next three, four years. Like, get used to seeing Timo Werner's face. Because he is going to be so clutch for us. And I love it. He's very versatile. And more importantly, he's very different to what we've had in the years to come. Man, it was so breathtaking to see someone running in behind with such assertiveness. The way he was running, he's like a sprinter. A very, very good player. Is he technically great? No. But can he not get past you and, get, and start running like it's be a pro on FIFA? Yes, 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 and yes. This U is fantastic. I can't wait to see what he's going to be like. My target for him is 19 games to score in in the Premier League. So that means a minimum of 19 goals. Whatever you do after that, I'm happy. I just need him to score 19 games. Literally. You need to be patient with Kai Havertz. Listen, people are thinking Kai Havertz is the finished article. He's 21. 21. He's 21. I'm going to reiterate that. 21. Hardly had a preseason. And this guy is raring to go. Do you guys understand? He rushed away from international duty to come and join us. He wants to integrate. He wants to settle in. And his quotes after the game were super interested. He said he could feel the difference in the pace. He can feel that it's completely different to the Bundesliga. He felt it in training for crying out loud. Guys, this is... It's going to take him time. We're not going to see the real Kai Havertz until January. Give him patience. Let's see what we can have. This is why we signed Timo Werner and why we signed Hakim Ziyech. They're the ones that are meant to come in and hit the ground running. But even with them, is you need to be patient. When it comes to new signings, it's the integration period. It's integral. It takes time. And you could see the quality in Havertz was there already. His languid approach and his body language is going to get criticised and scrutinised whenever we play badly. It's because of the talent that he is. But you, let's be honest and real. A little bit more athletic. And I'm not going to lie to you, we need a player like that at Chelsea. He was playing our position on the right wing. He's a 10. Let's be patient. Let's love him. Let's nurture him. And trust me, we're going to have a great asset on our hands. I literally think the same can be said. Literally, just li rewind, listen. And every time I say Kai Havertz, think of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. The same can be said. The only difference is, is the age. And I think with Ruben, we need to be patient. The guy was out with a serious injury. And the guy is the type of player that needs a run of games before he actually get, starts being himself. I don't think he's fully fit. The lack of preseason literally highlights for me that he's not fully fit. So we need to honestly be patient with Ruben off the street. There is a brilliant player in there and he's lacking confidence. Check my review out. Check my review out about what I said about him from one of the takeaways. It literally will magnify your eyes to the point where you're going to realize, bro, I'm actually being harsh. He's a good player. We can't give up on our own players, guys. It's as simple as this. Callum Hudson-Odoi, elite level talent. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, there is a big boy talent in there. And even Ross Barkley, I think a lot of us are harsh. Ross Barkley as an option off the bench is fantastic. 
I just I don't want to see Ross start, but I think off the bench, cup games, yeah, I'll have some of Ross, no problem. Honestly, I think Ross Barkley's a decent player. And I'm realistic about it. Jorginho, so much criticism. Let's be positive about the team. Let's get behind them. You know how I am. Come on. Come on, Blues. This was the Gaff Guys video, and you guys know how I am. I straight talking, no nonsense. It doesn't matter. I don't beat around the bush. I give you facts, truth, and honesty. Whatever, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I love this club, and I make statements. And you know what? Sometimes they're rash, apparently. I don't think so. I think everything I give... I give you a reasonable explanation. You might not agree with everything, but we're here to debate. So you're going to do me do his massive favor because you made it this far. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure we keep it interactive. The channel is growing at a rapid rate. I really appreciate it. 10K is the next target. Let's make it happen ASAP. Let go. Peace. Bye.